Welcome to the lovely Spanish island of Lanzarote in the Atlantic Ocean. In January, it's really nice. It's warm, sunny, just like this. And we're in Tagizi, which is the old capital of the island, and we're going to paint one of the little traditional buildings that are just outside the town. So this is the subject. It's uh, These little buildings are, are all over the island. They're very simple buildings, always painted white and nice mountain behind, some trees alongside. So I've chosen this particularly because it gives us quite a good composition and we've got some good tonal contrasts involved as well. So I'll start with the sky usually do start with sky, but the sky will continue into a wash that goes completely down the paper. And for the sky, I want a good strong blue for this. So I'm using a thalo blue green shade with a little bit of quinacridone magenta. Keeping the brush very wet. Uh, just diluting the sky a little as we get down. And change colour for a little bit of, this is just some burnt sienna, just mixed in with the blue and that will give us a, a suitable colour for the landscape. Again, very simply applied, we're not actually painting the landscape at the minute. This is just an initial first wash, just to colour the paper and give us our light. It's going to be ultimately our light. I just use plain water where the white building is. Now some of the paint will run down into that, but it's not going to affect the lightness of those buildings. And a little bit stronger colour in the bottom just for the foreground field. Now before I leave this to dry I'm going to use a, a little bit of, bit of tissue, a little bit of kitchen roll just to lift out some clouds in the sky. Just to give the sky a little bit more interest, no other reason really. Now when that's done, leave that to dry completely. Now once that is dry, we'll start on the background. I always try to work from background to foreground. So I begin with the, the distant mountains. And I'm just using, I want to keep things fairly warm because it, it's a warm place and I don't want things to get too cold. Even in the distance, aerial perspective sometimes can make you think that you need to do everything blue in the distance, but that's not the case. So long as it's subdued, it's generally okay. So get that wash in for the background mountains. We'll go a little bit faster here and there with the, the video just to, to keep things moving. But the important thing is with this part is that I want to start to indicate the suggestions of the distant buildings. So those little white buildings in the village in the distance. And I'm just really making, painting around the the little squares, little oblongs, just to give an impression of a distant village. No detail, no windows, no doors, nothing like that. Just a hint and a suggestion of the detail. Now, as I approach the buildings, I want to make sure that I leave the buildings light. So I shall be carefully painting around the buildings. And you can see that even though the buildings are not white paper, they still will look light. And that is because the area around them is darker. Simple as that. A little bit of variation just on the white walls. I don't want them to be, to be pure white, pure light. I want a little bit of variety in there. And then down onto the foreground. And I'm just using pretty much sweeping horizontal strokes to give me the suggestion of the of the field. I'm going to break those up. I'm going to put a little few little dots and dashes in just to to hint of rocks and furrows and things like that. Now the tricky bit, this is quite a tricky bit because there, there are a lot of shadows on these mountains and I want to try to get the impression of the shadows without 
making them too obvious. And the way to avoid making them too obvious is to soften the edges, or at least soften some of the edges. And to do that, I just use a, a slightly damp brush. A lot of this part of the painting is maybe would would be wrong to call it guesswork, but I'm I'm trying things and I'm hoping for the best. And if it works, I'll leave it alone. If it doesn't work, I'll soften it even more because softening an edge effectively is the same as erasing it. As I approach the foreground, I'll strengthen the wash up a little bit, warm it up a little bit, so a little bit more burnt sienna in the mix. And again, continue trying to get the idea of distance with these long horizontal lines. They tend to improve or increase the idea of flatness. Time for shadows now, and I like uh, a decent dark shadow helps to increase the light on the light parts of the building. So what I'm trying to do here is, is I'm trying to connect all of the shadows together, if at all possible. And very often shadows will naturally con collect, naturally connect together, but sometimes they won't. In which case, I'll cheat a little bit and I'll join them up anyway because. Joining them together gives you one great big interesting shape instead of a lot of small disconnected shapes which are not so good for the painting. It's time for trees now, and here I'm wanting to mix a really good strong green. It's more important to me that the green is strong in tone. I, I'm not too concerned about the actual colour of the green, I just want it to be dark. The structure of the tree is important here. Again, I'm not really worrying too much about what type of tree it is. I'm looking just for an interesting edge to the mark that I'm making. And I'm also using the tree as a negative shape to throw up the light walls that are in front of the tree. Remember that you can, in watercolour in particular, you can paint dark negative shapes that give you strong light positive shapes. And now I'm using a really dark mix to again create some really good tonal contrasts. So this is just for the strong shadow areas under porches 
den slags klar. Again, it's very much hinting at things. So I'm implying the doorways and windows just with these vertical marks. I'm not painting any detail. A little bit of softening always helps. Again, if I think that things are just a little bit too hard edged, a little bit too obvious, then I'll take my damp brush and just blur the edges slightly. That helps to push them back, make them slightly less interesting. I do like lampposts and things. I think they the subject's quite a horizontal subject. The buildings are horizontal, the land behind is horizontal. So these few vertical marks help to balance those horizontals. A little sword liner brush here is very good for very, very fine lines. Big breath and then the mark for the for the telegraph line or electric line, not sure which it is. Again, I like to get a little bit of variety where I've only have where I only have one wash on. I like to get a second wash on. It does two things. It creates variety, and it also I can use the marks and the direction of the marks that I'm making uh, to give me the uh, an idea as to the structure of the wall. So this is a wall, for example. I'm using vertical marks to indicate that, and I'm also using perspective marks, angled perspective marks, that help as well. And again, just so that our white buildings don't look too pristine, a little bit of a partial wash over that just helps to add interest and make it more natural looking. It's really only at this point that the painting starts to come together. And I think it's very important not to expect too much of a half finished painting. I think too many people get to the halfway point and give up because it doesn't look like the finished painting. But if you think about it logically, it can't possibly and shouldn't look like the finished painting. So the halfway stage can often be a little bit messy, a little bit insipid. And it's these final darks that really bring it to life. Again, this is now my third wash on this foreground field. So I've got a light tone from my first wash, the mid tone from the second wash, and now I'm adding a stronger third tone. But I'm being careful to still leave some of the first and second washes behind. We're pretty much done now really just again it's good fun to add these little darks I need to be careful not to overdo it but you know you might you have to have some fun when you're painting I think that's it I think we can probably leave it there I quite like a sketchy look to the thing. I don't want it to be too fussy, too detailed. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. See you next time. Bye.